Um, I think it is raucous and savage behaviour from the people that were leading us and supposed to be protecting us. To put it into perspective, um, my family, our days hung around the calls, sorry, our days hung around the calls that we would get from the hospital. Um, my dad could barely breathe and speak to us. Um, on the day that he died, we got a call from the hospital and were given two options of whether they would turn the machine off in front of us and he would die with us there or they would turn it off um, or they would let him kind of progress that afternoon and he would die that afternoon alone. Um, and whilst we were experiencing that, the government was celebrating, drinking cheese and wine, organising parties together, making jokes about it, being rude to their security staff and their cleaners. It's disgusting. It makes me, it makes me embarrassed to be British. And I think, you know, this pandemic is a global pandemic. We have one of the worst death rates in the world. When are we going to take accountability? To think that the government were gathering together and celebrating at a time where people were dying in their masses alone and people couldn't be with their loved ones, had to say goodbye like my family did over a video call or a text message, is completely disgusting and I think it shows the lack of moral authority that this government has um, and I don't know how this country can continue to have any faith in them whatsoever, certainly after this report has come out. Um, I think he doesn't want to. I think that he is someone who um, shakes his moral accountability at every possible chance. Um, I think that he will consistently try and distract from the situation and the gravity of his actions. Um, but I think that he absolutely should resign. Um, whether he does that, that's really down to his own party and his own backbench MPs. And um, I think that at this point they should see the evidence, the very damning evidence the fact that people in his, you know, while we were texting my dad to check that he was alive, basically, they were texting each other trying to prevent potential comm scandals or trying to get away with it was another thing that they said. Um, and it's unacceptable. They do not understand the gravity of what they've done and they need to be held accountable. Um, yeah, I think, what is the point of a report um, about scandals that have happened um, surrounding an ongoing pandemic. You know, 800 people died this week of COVID. And in this week last year, 150 people died. So the pandemic is ve very much still ongoing and people are still dying. Um, I think that Boris Johnson wants to minimise the, um, the scale of the pandemic in order to make his misdemeanours seem smaller. Um, and I think that we need to bear in mind that Boris Johnson's main priority is Boris Johnson and not the public. Um, and he will do everything that he can to minimise that drama. Yes, I think you'd have to be a very selfish person um, to put yourself and your job above everything else when, as I say, we've had one of the worst death rates in the world. Um, people have are dying for so many reasons in this country because of policies in his government. and. For him to stay and to show so little compassion for what people have lost and so little introspection for what has passed globally um, is an indication of the fact that it's almost like so, so, sociopathic behaviour. It's very strange. I think my, my dad would be very disappointed. Um, you know, my dad was Malaysian. Um, he came to the UK in the 70s, worked for the NHS for nearly 40 years and we already know that the NHS is built on immigration and he felt passionate about how important the NHS was and even before the pandemic it was being um, taken from in pieces and broken up already. It was already not in a good way at the point that we came to the pandemic. I think that he never really had faith in Boris Johnson and his government. I think that my dad would be ashamed, I think, um, of the way that this government and this country has responded to the pandemic time and time again and I think he'd be embarrassed about the way that we are probably being perceived by other by globally